the Oder River. River which lies in the center of mainland Europe. For 70 miles from its source, the river passes through the Moravian Gate, which separates the Sudetes from the Carpathian mountain ranges in Czechia. For 116 miles, the river acts as boundary between Poland and Germany, eventually spilling out into a lagoon north of the Polish city of Szczecin and into the Baltic Sea. A left tributary river named the Schlauza, which meets the odor within the present-day city of Wrocław, is the possible etymological source of what we now call this region, Silesia. Another possible source is southwest of Wrocław, a pagan sacred site with a similar name, Mount Schmalza, where sun worship can be dated as early as 1300 BC with the people of the Lusatian culture. These landscapes, and by extension this region, may have received their name from a Germanic tribe called the Zilingai part of a larger Germanic group known as the Vandals. These peoples were forced out of the area, initially by the Huns around 400 AD, and later by Slavic tribes migrating from the east. An old Polish word, meaning a wet, swampy place, related to the climate of the region, could also provide a source for Silesia. As history ticked on, Silesia fell under dominion of numerous factions. The Polish Pius dynasty, the Bohemian crown and by extension the Holy Roman Empire, Hungary, Austria, Prussia, Germany, and once again Poland. Banners and crowns rose and fell. Blood was spilled by Germans, Czechs, and Poles alike in this land sometimes in conflict with one another, sometimes against a common external threat, as in 1241, when Henry II was killed in the Battle of Legnica, when the Mongols could only be halted by a combined army of Polish and German knights. Such remnants of a tortured history have become soaked into the Silesian ground and wash northwards into the Baltic by way of the Oder River. We're in Silesia, not far from the city of Katowice. In this part of southern Poland, they still practice open pit mining. Here, where the landscape often resembles a moonscape, many consider themselves to be Silesians first and Poles second. In recent years, they've begun to celebrate their heritage openly. For the last five years, Silesians have taken to the streets for the annual March for Autonomy, demanding greater independence for Silesia. Since 1905, Silesians have defined themselves through football. These old pictures taken between the wars show the first division team from Katowice. In 1927, they finished second in the Polish league. In 2007, the team reformed. This is no new trend or fad. We don't run around one year in short pants and the next year in long ones. Being Silesian has always been a part of us. This has always been Silesia. Even under the Prussians, my forefathers considered themselves Silesian. Thank goodness we can say that out loud now. Today, people can see and hear us. 
We want something of our own, something separate. That doesn't mean we're better. Of course, we're not better than the Poles. We just want to show our identity clearly and distinctly. Let's say that in a fictional future, calls for autonomy did not go unheeded. And in this alternate reality, not only autonomy was granted, but even independence. Not a single shot fired, no blood spilled. The governments of Poland, the Czech Republic, and Germany came together with the Silesian autonomous movements in their countries and encouraged the creation of a free and independent Silesian state. For the first time in history, Silesia and Silesians could call themselves self-determined. In the agreement, three regions of Poland provided the majority of Silesian land. Those three regions which straddle the Oder River are the Slaskia, Dolnoslaskia, and Opolskia. From Czechia, the Moravia Silesia region would make up the remainder of this new Silesia. Every Pole and Czech who lived in the region would be allowed to retain Polish or Czech citizenship. From Germany, a bulk of capital investment would be injected into the region, as well as an encouragement of immigration of German nationals, especially those with Silesian family history. As in most of the world, a significant way in which Silesia would indicate its identity to the world would be through sport. Football in the region already had a rich history and has produced world-class talent. Now, the newly formed Silesian Football Association would have the task of constructing a league system from the already established clubs in the region, as well as standing up the Silesian men's and women's national teams to begin competing on a continental and world stage. Top clubs would lead the way. Most recent Polish Ekstraklasa champions of Rakow would now be Silesia's top club. Along with current Ekstraklasa league leaders, Śląsk Wrocław. Two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen, extra class of champions Piask Lewica. Two thousand six, two thousand seven, champion Zagłębie Lubin. Current club Lukas Podolski, Gornik Zabrze. Historic Silesian flag bearers Rook Ortsov. Czech Fortuna League of Mainstay Bonnik Ostrava. And a host of others who form the new top flight. Of Silesian football. Next came the highly politicized hiring of a national team manager who would take the mantle of this new, multilingual, multi ethnic nation's most prized sporting selection. An American 